welcome back, Hobby Maniacs. This is uh, quickly becoming what's being known as the uh, Spiky Bits Studio Update Show. So, which I, I don't really mind. That's uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, I only plan on doing these about once or twice a week. You know, at the beginning of the week because there's so much going on. Obviously, yesterday being Monday, there was all sorts of rumors for the weekend, and I actually didn't get to 40k end time stuff like I wanted to, which was actually kind of fortunate because today it looks like the winds have changed and you know now we're hearing that there might be some sort of not end times but maybe end times maybe fantasy ninth and now I'm just starting to hear more on that like and one of the big things on that was don't base your minis so who knows what's going on there uh but all that aside uh that's still being sorted out on in and of itself but uh today over on uh worse here there was a lot more talk about this supposed Horus Heresy box set. So that's the big news from May. There was something big coming and certain people didn't want to talk about it. And there was all this like conjecture and rumors. And then finally somebody said, you know, you may, maybe you got to think outside the box because people weren't getting it. They were saying Mark 9 armor and they were saying 40k end times. And I guess they just were kind of just stringing everybody along. And what happened was somebody was like, well, maybe think inside the box like a new box set and then, then it kind of just snowballed on its own and that's kind of where we're at right now yeah some guy on some rumor said something about horse heresy coming out in plastic okay so where where do we stand well the, the pretty reliable pretty, pretty reliable sources so hopefully it happens because that would be really cool that'd be a big shot in the arm it'd be like a free expansion i'm not exactly sure how it would work between 40k, uh, you know, excuse me, Games Workshop and uh, Forge World, but we know that they do have plans coming to the States. Also, some stuff going on, if it hasn't already broke, um, I'm, I'm sure it will be here shortly, that uh, GW apparently has a paperback printing company. They have purchased one. They will be able to run on the fly with paperbacks. You can call up, apparently it's not even like a, a secret. I called customer service myself and I was like hey um, here in the states and I was like hey what's this about and they're like yeah yeah we we're, we're just printing up our own paperbacks okay thanks guys um, yeah so that was interesting so apparently it's not that hard to do a lot of people the trend supposedly is that they're taking their printing out of China because there's so much piracy the government over there I guess isn't shutting it down so you got all this stuff, you know, we saw all these leaks for End Times Archeon coming from Chinese uh, publishers because they didn't realize that the book wasn't out and they were putting it out for sale. You could actually buy End Times Archeon a month ago over on, you know, a Chinese site, the, the hardcover book, right? So, you know, that that's going to become a problem. So, that being said, now we're seeing that they're trying to keep more stuff in-house, maybe not farm out those hardcovers, you know, just do the, the white dwarfs and things in-house, get them out quick. They can switch to soft covers instead of hard covers. All sorts of crazy stuff there. So, uh, that being said, uh, that's the big uh, news and rumors for Games Workshop. Let's talk about Fantasy Flight games. Like I said, yesterday, there wasn't a whole lot of stuff coming out of Fantasy Flight. But today, it looks like we have news. Uh, the new X-Wing, the new wave of X-Wing ships, I think it's Wave 5, I want to say, is coming out. So that'll be really cool. We got uh, the Star Viper, I believe, uh, Prince Izor, the uh, uh, mercenaries from Shadows of the Empire, if y'all recall that 90s uh, kind of crossover thing. Maybe it's canon, maybe it's not canon, Disney, I don't know. But anyway, it's the Star Viper uh, expansion coming out. It's a $20, just a little bit expensive than the normal $15 ship, whatever. I don't know why, but it's coming out. Uh, then we've got the uh, M3A Interceptor, which is kind of the, it kind of looks like the Headhunter, but it's a little bit different, I guess. And that's a normal price of $15. Then we've got the IG-2000, which is a large ship, and it can do that crazy S backwards turn thing. And and uh, it doesn't have 360 cannons, which I think would definitely put it over the top there. But, uh, you know, it's still a new ship, and uh, hey, we love new stuff, right? I really want to see one of these large ships work besides the Falcon. And then we've got the Most Wanted pack, which is three ships for $40, two Headhunters, and a Y-Wing. You know, kind of rebelled out, and or not rebels. Well, I guess they are kind of the rebels. But this is scum and villainy. It's the bad guys. It's the, um, the bounty hunters, so to speak. And... You know, that's, uh, it, so they're painted up a little bit different. So, big ships coming out. We also saw a restock of 
the uh, current ships, a couple of them, I think there was like 10 codes. It looks like it's going to be back in stock at Fantasy Flight. So the boat's in from China. I guess it got through the the whole longshoreman strike and it made it to the warehouses and they're processing it. Maybe it got through before, after, I don't know. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to question it. I just want to see new ships. So hopefully we'll have some unboxings here next week of the new uh, X-Wing ships, if that's your thing. Uh, moving on. I uh, wanted to, once again, thank everybody for their support uh, for the for Spiky Biz, for our video tutorials and features. Uh, we have two new supporters, so I'm going to give you all a shout out. We've got Fallen and uh, Carl. Thank you guys so much. Uh, they came in yesterday, um, I guess after I cut my video, so I want to make sure I uh, did a shout out for, for you guys. Thank you so much. Um, also got a, a interesting note from uh, Dustin Denson. I believe I hope I hope I said his name right from one of the one of the social medias. I'm not exactly sure of Facebook or Twitter's who, who knows anymore. It's all it's all blur to me. But uh, he had an interesting question. He's like, hey, you know, followed you for a long time. Uh, you know, super appreciate what you do. Thank you so much. And he was like, I always get asked, you know, how I started out in a hobby. And, I, and he, he posed the question to me. And I was like, hey, that's a great question, you know, because I don't really I guess I don't really talk about it. You know, a lot of people just assume I'm just some kid and, uh, you know, uh, like, what's this kid know about 40K? Well, I'm, I'm, I am a little bit older than I look. I started in the hobby from, uh, I was doing scale models back in the uh, early to mid 80s uh, to late 80s. I really liked aircraft. I did a lot of aircraft and um, we didn't have Gundams back then. We didn't have cool, crazy robots. So, that I probably imagine I would have been doing that had I uh, had I been a little bit younger and or born later I guess so to speak so I uh, started out with the scale miniatures um, was not allowed to go into the crazy scary uh, gaming store in my neighborhood or I guess in my town um, but the cool thing was that the model store was right next to it so one day I was able to sneak in there and check it out and that's uh, kind of how I started into 40k and I kind of misled my parents for a while about uh, what the models were I was working on, you know, but eventually they figured out that's not an F-14 Tomcat. What, what is that? You know, and then I had to come clean. But, you know, they were like, oh, it's not worshiping the devil. So that's cool. I was like, yes, I agree. So um, I'm just going to play with my army men now and make pew pew noises and uh, paint them up. Thank you. <laughs> I actually started with chaos. So it was kind of like worshiping the devil. A little bit, I guess, but I didn't definitely didn't let them onto that one at all. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, anyways, memories. So that's how I got started. Um, definitely feel free to leave comments in in the uh, 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 the comments here on the uh, YouTube page about uh, how you got started into the hobby because that'd be really interesting to see. We had a thread over on the Spiky Bits Hobbies page, which is different from the Spiky Bits Facebook's page. It's a group page. It's got about 3,000 members. It's a pretty chill place. A lot of people post up their work in progress and just kind of talk to each other on a daily basis. We got a guy in there, Troy, that posts all sorts of uh, crazy memes and he's into cosplay and he makes stuff. And it's, it's really cool. It's a, a whole varied crew of uh, people into different things. But somebody posted a question about, hey, how, um, you know, I, am I an old fart in here? I think he said he was 42 or 43. And he's like, am I an old fart in here? And I swear there's like 200 comments on this thing about, you know, oh, no, hey, I'm 52, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm 30, I'm whatever, but it didn't seem like there was a whole bunch of younger guys in there, and I was like, well, that's kind of weird, because you would figure, you know, the target demographic supposedly is teenagers, but it doesn't really seem to be anymore, maybe they're pricing it out of it, you know, for games or a shop hobby, but um, it was really interesting, because it seemed like everybody was 25 or older, or, you know, early 20s or late 20s and older, so, you know, if, uh, if you're younger and you're into the hobby, definitely hop over to the uh, Spiky Bits uh, Hobbies page on Facebook and and uh, you know throw your uh, throw your voice in the mix in there and be like, hey man, you know I'm a little bit younger and, or whatever or older or maybe you're 70. That would be cool to hear too. But it was just kind of interesting because I always wonder, you know, you see the historical guys kind of like off in the corner at conventions or in the back rooms at larger game stores, and they're all just kind of doing their own thing, and they, you know they're generally an older crowd. And I always wonder, I'm like, man, is Games Workshop gonna going to kind of turn into this and I even made that comment and somebody was like yeah you know our kids and the younger the younger generation is going to all be playing with holograms and like you know it's going to be like that that Star Trek um you know that Star Trek multi-level like chess thing you know and it's it's kind of crazy 
So who knows? Who knows what the future holds? Maybe they'll just print out their their freaking models on the little maker box in the corner, you know, with their uh, Earl Grey tea from Star Trek and just print out their models and just go to town and, and we're sitting here painting our stuff because we're idiots. I, I don't know. Who knows what the future holds, but it's definitely exciting to be part of the hobby. This just, uh, it doesn't seem to be the same one year to the next. That's uh, definitely for sure. And, uh, you know, who knows with these plastic uh, horse heresy models, maybe they're going to be more detailed. Maybe they're going to be super crazy, three dimensional. I, I don't know, but um, definitely the future is very exciting. Uh, it seems in 2015 for sure. So uh, that's about it for this one, guys. Thanks for hanging in there with me. Uh, currently on my workbench, I have, uh, what is it? Uh, I guess uh, five or six White Scars bikers that I'm currently airbrushing on right now. I got a bunch of Admech dudes um, and some crazy uh, cyber, uh, crazy uh, adept guys and... Um, Oh, some of the Vorax, the uh, the crazy like little chicken walker robot things for the Mechanicus 2 Horus Heresy. So that's currently what uh, what I'm working on uh, here in the studio. Also got some um, work in progress stuff I'm, I'm shooting. Got some videos to edit and things like that. So it's all uh, it's kind of a blur. Hopefully get one one tutorial out this week and uh, definitely ho hopefully can get a hold of the. Harlequin book and do a review on it this weekend, but it's going to be touch or go on that one because of the whole strike thing. So uh, we will see how that goes. I might have to do a digital copy, but that's okay. I like the EPUBs and they're uh, generally like 15 bucks cheaper. So it's almost like getting it for wholesale. Yeah. So, <laughs> all right, guys, like I said, that's about it for this one. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel. Uh, check out the blog, spikybitsblog.com. Uh, we got a fancy new template on there that you might not have if even noticed. So go over there and take a look at it. Let me know what you think. Definitely want to hear it. Still tweaking it a little here and there. And uh, listen to our podcast, forcenarrative.com.